This countdown timer was made entirely in Bolt for Unity. Let's take a look at that flow graph. We'll go into full screen mode here. You can get a screenshot of this or just follow along with me. I'll cover everything we're doing. We start with the event unit. From the event unit, we want to go into a while loop. And this is where the countdown timer graph variable comes in. It's not a scene variable, but a graph variable. And I start it at three. You could start this at five or seven or 10. This is going to set the value of the text on the screen. So into this loop, it says while countdown time is greater than zero, continue with this loop. So we'll go over the body first and then we'll exit the loop when it reaches zero and I'll show you what that does. I created a scene variable to set the race to active or not. And this is going to keep the car from being able to be driven while the countdown timer is happening. So this would work for anything that you wanna do. If you're not doing a racing game, if you're doing any other type of game, you can keep the player from shooting a weapon or moving anything like that. After that, we're gonna do a play one shot. I got an audio clip of a beep number four. These beeps are just from freesound.org. You can go through a lot of those free sounds. You can listen to a lot of them and then pick the best one for the situation you wanna use. And then we're going to set the text of the countdown time which is the self here. So this is just a UI element and it's gonna set the text of itself to the countdown time variable, which at this point is three. And then what we have to do is reduce the countdown time by one. So we're going to set the variable of countdown time to countdown time minus one. And then we wanna run a delay. Uh, so this is a wait for seconds, uh, number one. That's all, that's the end of the uh, flow graph right there. Uh, and so to make the waits activated, you do have to set the event start to a coroutine. Real simple, you just check the box. It's gonna loop through that three times to be one second each. And then once it hits zero, it's going to exit the loop and then do something different. That it changes the race active to be true. It's gonna play a one shot beep. Uh, and that beep is going to indicate that it's time for the player to go. In this case, it's just changes the text to go. I just have this hard coded. It delays a second and then it deactivates itself. So it's not gonna be active anymore. That's the flow graph for this object. We'll come back out of full screen and I'll show you what the object actually is. The object is simply uh, a number Three. And so it runs that code and sets itself to three, two, one. I also have an animation connected to this. So you can see the animation controller, the animator right here for a countdown. If we go to the animation window, we can see that. So in the project window, we have a countdown animation controller, which I have called pop in, fade out. And we go over to the animation window and you can see that I've got it set to change its anchor position. This kind of gives it that float upwards. And you can see I have it started at zero 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 x y and z in its position so we'll go to the keyframes and as i cycle through them you can see that the position is actually changing on the y-axis position will kind of smooth itself out using the keyframes that i have depicted here in this uh, animation window this happens over the course of a second and so it kind of pops on gets a little bit bigger in terms of the scale and then it fades up and out so uh, there's three items there that work uh, together to kind of make this effect happen. So the scale also increases. If you look at the scale X, Y, you will see that it starts at zero, zero, and then it will pop on real quick. So now the, the scale is at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then it will go to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, which is, I just felt like it looked better that way. And then it will stay at 0 0.3 as it fades out. So it pops on, it's bigger, and then it comes back down to a more normal size. And the third thing I have doing is the alpha channel fades to zero. So it starts off at zero. If we go to the first keyframe, our alpha channel, which you can't really see until you click on the color, it's at zero. And then we'll go to another keyframe. Uh, this one, it goes to one. So it's at 255, which is 100%. And then I have another keyframe where I have it fading out. Now, the reason this doesn't go all the way to a second, this is 0.5. Is so that way it fades all the way out before it changes numbers. If I let this go all the way to the end of the animation, there's a chance the player can see the number change before it completely fades out. I want to avoid that, so I backed up this keyframe just a touch. And if you come back for the next video, we're going to use some of these same tricks to use a best lap timer with a scene variable that can track the best lap over the course of that track for the, as long as the game session is in place and an app variable for this steering track best lap throughout the course of that same save file. Thanks for watching.